Oh, sweet mystery of death, at last I've found you. Hey, everybody, I'm Steve Green, and this is Right Angle with Bill Whittle and Scott Opp, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. What if there was a machine learning tool that could tell you with 90% accuracy whether you would have a heart attack or die in the next few years? Well, it exists, believe it or not. This headline just came out on uh, on Monday. Uh, the story says, an algorithm similar to the ones used by Netflix and Spotify to determine what TV shows or music you want to listen to can predict who will die or have a heart attack, again, with 90% accuracy. Uh, machine learning was used to train Logit Boost, which its developers say can predict death or heart attacks. It was programmed to use 85 variables to calculate the risk to health of the 950 patients that it was fed scans into. And these people were already complaining of, uh, of chest pains. They didn't just take people off the street at random. These were people under care of a doctor for, for one reason or another. And all the data collected from these patients and these 85 data points was, uh, was fed into the computer to train the algorithm to get these stunning results. Um, Bill, you were saying backstage that if you could go to your doctor as soon as we were done taping the show and get this scan done that you would absolutely do it. What about the, the, the privacy concerns? What if uh, uh, your health insurer uh, got a hold of this data? What if you worked for a major corporation that's always looking to cut costs and they got hold of this data? Uh, neither of those conditions trump me being alive. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, th- those are those are fairly high class problems compared with dropping dead. Uh, so um, I'm not I'm not too worried about that, especially since this is the kind of thing where I would you know I'm. It's not like I get an email or a, or a snail mail from your federal government saying, "Hi, just a friendly reminder, you're not going to make it out of this year." You know, uh, you know, best wishes, your government. Uh, the, the the interesting part of the well, first of all, this is a small side note, but when when this will become very very valuable is when they factor in um, people who are not already uh, under physicians' care for chest pains. Uh, if they can, if they can basically, in other words, if they can put in enough data from the general public and maintain this level of accuracy um, to indicate to people who aren't already uh, cardiac care patients that they probably should be uh, doing something different. But I think the thing that's interesting here, and I think that what you pointed out in the in the backstage show, Steve, is uh, is would you know? Do you want to know? And um, and if if it was a question of of, of either God or uh, or some uh, future time traveler who looked like you know Doctor Who uh, said to me, uh, "I've got a historical record of when you actually died. Do you want to know?" That question is an interesting question. I'd have to ponder that one. But if you're talking about a diagnostic test that I would go down and take that test, let's say, and, and it says, no, you, you, there's 84 different points and you wing every single one of them, you're, you're likely to not last the year. I would, of course, want to know because it's, that, that's not, that's not, um, destiny. It, it's a predictor. It's, it's basically what, what the test would say is, yeah, you're, you're going to drop dead of a heart attack if you don't do something different. Right? I mean, that's basically what it's, what it's saying. I mean, just take it to its most, uh, its most extreme. If I were to just suddenly decide, hey, you know what? I got a little extra money on my hand. It's a Saturday. I think I'll have a heart transplant. Um, <laughs> that would certainly, that would certainly change the, the, um, all of the algorithms, you know, in terms of, of what it's measuring. So, so of course I'm, uh, I love it. I think it's great. And these kind of diagnostic tests using deep learning is where artificial intelligence is showing its most promise. I've done a, a couple segments. We've done a couple segments on some of the dangers of of AI, but this kind of thing, where you've got AI in a pretty tight little box, uh, is is tremendous. And and I'm not joking. I I would love to go and and have that test taken right away. And you know I I know there are people um, who who don't they just don't want the test. You know they they don't want to take the test because they don't want to get bad news. I remember during the yeah. um, during the AIDS crisis in the when it was really peaking like in the late 80s early 90s I went down for an HIV test and it took me you know months uh, to do because you know it was a death sentence um, but 
even even something as, as severe as like an extreme, uh, like if they detect some sort of extreme uh, heart arrhythmia or, or or cancer or something like that, the day you get a the day you get a diagnosis of cancer, is the day that cancer stops having the, the field all to itself and went in for free. The day you get that diagnosis is the day you start fighting back. You know, it's the day, it's the day that, that you actually get into the fight. And um, so I'm one of those guys that would, would much rather know. And, and, and uh, I, I hope they can take this kind of technology and open it up to other things so long as it's voluntary. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't want, I don't want this thing um, telling me about these conditions without me asking because I don't want it to have that much information about me. Yeah, uh, Scott, it, it occurs to me, this is sort of the uh, 2007, this is the iPhone 1 of uh, AI diagnostics. It's it's expensive, it doesn't know a whole lot just yet. Uh, it, it just predicts heart attacks or death from heart attacks. It doesn't, it doesn't do all that much, but we saw in the first five or six years of having these touchscreen smartphones just how quickly this infor- the, 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 this technology advances. And I think it'll move even faster with machine learning because the more data you feed into it, the smarter it gets at an exponential rate. But is there a, is there a top end? Is there a top end of what you want to know about your own health? Or, or is it just the earlier you know, the better? Well, I think there are a couple of aspects to this. First of all, I think you don't really need to use artificial intelligence and 85 different indices to to project this, especially with a subset of people who are already heart patients. I say, here's what you do. This is the entire test. You walk into a room like Mr. Green. Um, look, I, I tell you what, I'm going to put this marshmallow on the table right here. And if when I come back to the room, the marshmallow is still there, I'll give you another marshmallow. Okay, otherwise no more marshmallows. And then I leave the room for five minutes. If I come back and you've eaten the marshmallow, then I can tell you without question, you're gonna die in the next three years. You're already, because you're not able to defer gratification or delay gratification. You've got to have it now and you're kind of obstinate and you don't want to, you don't want to do what people tell you to do. So I really don't think we need all that other information about people. We could just basically say, hey, we know what kind of person you are. You're probably going to be dead in three years. Um, the other thing is I'm the kind of person like I didn't want to know the sex of the baby. OK, yeah, oh, you know, when, when the with the uh, the ultrasound thing, I didn't want to know. I don't want to open the Christmas presents until Christmas morning. So, you know, I would rather have the day of my death dawn fresh and new upon me. <laughs> and years ago, I don't know if this is true or not, but years ago I was at a meeting. It was actually a sales meeting. And the guy who was the speaker, for some reason, decided to go off on this tangent about health. And uh, one of the things he said was for men, uh, the the first symptom of uh, a heart attack for 40% of men is sudden death. <laughs> I thought that's great. Wow. That's good. Because who wants to suffer? I mean, really, who wants to go through all that chest pain and everything like that, <laughs> that the other 60% have to go through and then having your chest rib cage cracked open? That can't be any fun. So I know I'm being uh, morbid about this and intentionally so, but uh, I, I really... Uh, I think it can be useful to have diagnostics like this, but like Bill says, it, it's only useful if it results in behavioral change um, and in change, frankly, that has an effect. And that's the other problem because the medical profession has gotten a lot better at diagnosing and predicting things than they have at, at really knowing that they're treating things. I mean, they're doing a lot of things to us, but then you hear years later, they go, oh, well, by the way, that thing that we recommended for everybody just uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, don't do that. That's, that's a bad idea. Uh, yeah, we just uh, learned about this. Uh, there's another one, olive oil, which is supposed to be the amazing part of the Mediterranean diet that lets people live to be 412 or whatever. Uh, now there's a new thing. Maybe the olive oil isn't that good for you after all. Uh, she so was good for marshmallows. She's good enough for me. Yeah. Marshmallows linked to longevity survey discovers. <laughs> I'll, I tell you what, I could totally pass that test if instead of marshmallows, you use martinis or scotch, because I will sit there like a stone until you've got four or five of those lined up in front of me. Then I'm going to town. Except oh, those death germs are just those death germs are just sterilized in you, Steve. You're going to live forever. Right. At the very least, you won't need embalming. Let's put it that way. No. Uh, well, actually, my retirement plans hinge on the development rather soon of a robot liver. So uh, finger, <laughs> fingers crossed. We're uh, 
We're, we're hoping to see headlines about that any day now. Uh, folks, my first reaction to the story was really negative. I thought back to, uh, it was actually Robert Heinlein's first published story. It was called Lifeline. It was about this sort of mad scientist who came up with a device that could predict the actual moment of your death. And there was a there was a scene in the book or in the story I haven't read in a long time, so excuse me if my memory's a little shaky. But a young couple came with their with their savings to to see how long they had. Should they have kids? How should they plan their their new married lives together? And he refused to take their money. He said, "Listen, the machine's not working. Just you know, be on your way, enjoy your lives." And they walk out of his office and get hit by a car and are killed instantly. And he had read this on the machine and he just didn't want to have anything to do with his own device anymore. But the more I thought of it, I, I thought about, I, I had not exactly a, a health scare recently, but it turned out the, the medication I was taking to help me sleep at night was making me feel like my heart was about to explode in the morning. And so I got, I went to the doctor, I got the EKG and all that. I started, I bought, I bought a Apple watch four series four so I could have the little, uh, uh, EKG thing here and see if I've got AFib or any of that. And I started thinking more and more about this ability to drill information downward to the patient. Uh, I wrote about this on Instapundit a couple of months ago. There was You see these stories almost every week where somebody gets a, a, a new Apple Watch Series 4, or one of these other uh, one-line EKG devices that you can wear and get a reading, who go to the doctor and say, you know, I think my watch is wrong, but it says I've got AFib, I feel fine. And the doctor goes, whoa, we need to do stuff, and it's, it's actually saving lives. And... I ran into resistance in the comments on Instaplanet on this. Uh, one from a, an, an actual doctor who is, I guess, has this sort of uh, Gnostic view of medicine, where there are things about you, about your health, about your body, that only the doctor should know. And I say, to hell with that. Drill the information down. Yeah, I worry about the privacy concerns of a, the, the government or my employer or somebody else finding this stuff out. But mostly, I want the power to know these things myself so that with my doctor I can make the best informed choice. And I think the future of medicine is stuff we already have. It's the wrist, it's the watch on your wrist, it's, it's the smartphone in your pocket. These things are going to empower people, they already are. I saw a thing, I think it was last year, that uh, Google had developed an AI, a, this, an app for your Android phone that is as good or better than a doctor at detecting melanoma, if you can believe this. So yes, let's drill this information down. I'm with Bill on this one. The earlier you find stuff out, the earlier you can change behavior, the earlier you can get treatment, and the better your outcome is likely to be. So this is a glorious new future, and uh, no matter what Robert Heinlein might have been cranky about in 1938 or 39, I'm seeing a lot of good coming out of this. And there's your right angle on that, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. If you like shows like this, please Please become a member. Click on over to BillWhittle.com. We would love to have you on board. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.